How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a look at Jason Bourne, the latest movie in the long-running Bourne franchise, once again starring Matt Damon in the titular role, and also starring Alicia Vikander and Tommy Lee Jones. But before we get into Jason Bourne, let's back up a bit and take a look at the movies that led up to this, starting with The Bourne Identity, which I really like. I think that is a very solid action movie. I think Matt Damon does a great job with the character, and I like the story of this this assassin who suddenly wakes up with amnesia and has to try to figure out who he is and why all of these people so desperately want to kill him. The Bourne Identity is still, to this day, the best movie in the series easily because pretty much every movie since then has continued to fall downhill. That doesn't mean that all the movies that followed were bad. The Bourne Supremacy and The Bourne Ultimatum were okay, but the problem is... With the character of Jason Bourne, one of the things that made him so appealing was the mystery surrounding his past. But as time goes on, they keep revealing more and more details about the character. And once you take that mystery away, there's really nothing left. Supremacy and Ultimatum still have their moments. They got some cool fights and chase sequences and all that, but the character just got progressively less interesting over time. And then we have The Bourne Legacy, which is the Bourne movie without Jason Bourne. Instead, we have Jeremy Renner playing an entirely new character, and it was very meh. I don't think there's anything overtly wrong with it, but it doesn't really do anything for me either. It's just a very basic action movie. I will at least give them credit for trying to do something new by introducing a new character, but they also introduced Oscar Isaac and then killed him off in the first act, and that's never a good idea. The Force Awakens learned from that mistake. They were gonna kill him off in the first act, but then they thought, wait, the Bourne Legacy did that, that sucked. No, we're not gonna do that. By the way, if you were hoping Jeremy Renner would show up in the new movie, he's nowhere to be found. I believe they're saving him for the next Bourne movie, whenever that happens. And that brings us to the latest movie in the series, Jason Bourne. The least inventive title in this entire franchise, which is rather appropriate because this is the least inventive movie in the series. It is just a complete rehash of shit they've already done, especially the Bourne Supremacy. It's almost the exact same thing plot point for plot point. You've got a new top secret CIA program for training assassins, but instead of Treadstone like it was in Identity or... Blackbriar, or whatever the fuck they called it in Born Supremacy, it's now Iron Hand. And much like the super secret assassin programs that were mentioned in the previous Born movies, they never really do a good job of explaining exactly what this program is supposed to do and how it differs from any of the programs that came before it. And there are many. In fact, in Jason Bourne, they mentioned that between Blackbriar, which started in Born Supremacy, and Iron Hand, which is the new one in Jason Bourne, there have been another seven programs. So Iron Hand is number 10. And what do they all do? What's the difference between any of them apart from the name? Don't know. And also, like Born Supremacy, you have Jason Bourne trying to avenge a loved one that was killed by the CIA, but instead of his girlfriend, now it's his father. You have a corrupt CIA guy and his personal assassin trying to kill him, but instead of Brian Cox and Carl Urban, it's Tommy Lee Jones and Vincent Cassell. And the assassin is still known as The Asset, because they are too creatively bankrupt to come up with a new name, even though they rename their training program every two years. You also have a female CIA agent who is kind of on Jason Bourne's side and trying to help him for reasons that are never really made clear. And this time, instead of Joan Allen, it's Alicia Vikander. There's very little new ground being broken here, which really makes me wonder why they even bothered. Honestly, the only new element here is Tommy Lee Jones' character is working with some kind of software company that has this hot new app that everyone wants, and he's trying to convince them to install some kind of super secret government backdoor so they have a way to spy on people, basically which is an idea that I'm sure would resonate with a lot of people today because privacy online is a big deal nowadays. It's just a shame that they didn't put more effort into this part of the plot because the whole thing just feels 
I don't even want to say it's half-baked because that's giving it too much credit. It's more like a sixth baked, which is hardly baked at all. And this movie is really stupid when it comes to technology, too. Um, very early on in the movie, Julia Stiles visits this den of computer hackers in order to infiltrate the CIA database and grab some top-secret information. Oh, and by the way, if the trailer led you to believe that Julia Stiles would have a big part to play in this movie, she's out of there by the end of the first act. Weak. And the hackers are all speaking a foreign language, and the movie occasionally throws in a subtitle here and there, and one of the lines that they subtitled reads, Use SQL to corrupt their databases. Which does not sound like something that a hacker would actually say. I'm not sure if something maybe got lost in translation, like maybe the actual line that the actress said had something to do with like a sequel injection attack, which would have made a bit more sense. Or maybe the people who wrote this movie just skimmed an article on databases and grabbed a few keywords and threw it in there to make it look like they knew what they were doing. It's one thing when a movie doesn't understand technology, but it's even more embarrassing when it doesn't understand technology but tries to pretend it does. And as Julia Stiles' character is stealing these files, Alicia Vikander spots the intrusion and plants some malware into the files, so the next time someone tries to open the files and read the information, it will send a signal back to the CIA letting them know where the person is. Pretty smart idea, actually, but here's the thing. Jason Bourne himself is the one who eventually reads this information, and it would have been trivial for him to avoid detection. All he had to do was disconnect from the internet. But this never occurs to him. This man is supposed to be the world's greatest super spy with extreme intelligence and trained to avoid detection. Never occurs to him to turn off the fucking Wi-Fi. And sure, he doesn't actually know the malware is in there, but he does know who he's working against. He knows their tactics. They trained him. One would think he would be smart enough to play it safe and disconnect from the internet before plugging in the flash drive. The acting in this movie is very hit and miss, and sometimes I really don't know if I should blame the actors themselves or if I should blame the script from giving them so little to work with. Matt Damon gives one of the most uninspired performances I have ever seen from him, and I normally really like him as an actor, but... Part of that may come from the fact that the script does not give him much to do. I read somewhere that he only has about 25 lines of dialogue in this movie. That sounds about right. There is a moment in this movie where Bourne has a phone conversation with Vikander and Jones, although I don't know if calling it a conversation is correct, because after he initially says, this is Jason Bourne, at the start of the phone call, I don't think he says another word. He just stands there looking like an idiot while Vikander and Jones try to talk to him, and then he just hangs up and walks off. Vikander and Jones are okay. They're at least trying, but again, they don't have much to work with. I did like Vincent Cassell as the asset, which is still an incredibly boring name, but his performance was not. He was actually doing a pretty good job. And Julia Stiles, for her brief time on camera, man, she sounded like she did not want to be there. When she first meets up with Bourne, she goes into this long exposition dump, and it just sounds so boring and so robotic. But again, I don't know if that's her or if it's the script, because the way it was written, I don't know if there was a good way for her to say it. This is the first time in the Bourne series where Tony Gilroy was not involved with writing the screenplay, and boy, it shows. This time around, it was co-written by director Paul Greengrass and Christopher Rouse, his editor. A man who has one writing credit to his name, Jason Bourne. And maybe it should stay that way. And speaking of Mr. Greengrass, Matt Damon reportedly said he would never come back to do another Jason Bourne movie unless Greengrass was directing. 
I'm not really sure why. This movie is so shaky and so cut heavy, and some of the action scenes are pretty poorly done. If you've seen the trailer, then you've seen a clip from the big car chase at the end where there's this big armored car plowing through all of these cars on the Las Vegas Strip, and that one part of the chase does look pretty awesome. But the rest of it is so messy and there are so many quick cuts and the camera is shaken every which way, it honestly started to remind me of Getaway. And Getaway was shit. And at the very end of the movie, there's this fight between Matt Damon and Vincent Cassell, and it looks awful. It's in a very dimly lit area in the middle of the night. It's shaking all over the place. The camera is cutting every five frames, I swear. Half the time, I can't tell who's hitting who. And the camera doesn't just shake during the action sequences. Sometimes it'll shake for no good goddamn reason at all. Like when you're trying to read something that the character is reading on the screen of his cell phone. Paul, hold the camera still so I can read what it is you want me to read. This is not difficult. The amazing thing is, this is not the first time Greengrass has directed a Bourne movie. He previously directed Supremacy and Ultimatum, and I do not remember him being this bad. In the end, this was a very weak action movie, and I can't really give it a recommendation unless you're a big Jason Bourne fan. And even then, I would say, wait for rental. And that's all I got to say about Jason Bourne. So until next time, take care.